One of the things I've had to do a lot of over the years is firing missiles. Now, sometimes it was a rocket like you see on the screen. Sometimes it was water balloons or paintballs or fun kind of things like that. But it was always creating multiple items and being able to update the properties of those items as the game progressed. And I'm just going to show you today how to shoot a simple rocket in the air. And I've grabbed these graphics from opengameart.org. And this is what they look like downloaded. I'm going to be using the phaser snippets on my website, williamclarkson.net. And you just go to Toolbox and Phaser Snippets. And I'm also going to be using the phaser templates. And there's a link for it right there. And we're going to be using the basic template. Uh, these are free downloads. And I'm going to be using a local server. I have been calling it XAMP. I have recently been told it may be called ZAMP. But whichever it is, I've got another video on that if you haven't got a local server installed. And I'll include a link to that in the comments below. So make a new folder inside your local server, htdocs, and I'm putting it in a subfolder in the, of YouTube where I'm keeping all the code for now. And I'll just call it Rocket. And I'm going to go ahead and open that in the editor. I'll copy that path. And open folder. So there, it's the empty folder inside the editor. And I'm going to grab everything from the basic template. Just go inside there, select all, copy. And I'm going to make an images folder. And I'm going to grab the red, white, and blue missile. And I'm going to change the name to Rocket. I don't need those. I'm going to go ahead now and go to my local host. And there's the Rocket folder there. Just a blank game, and I'll open the developer console by pushing F12 on Chrome. It says ready, and we're good to go. So the first thing we need to do is go into our state main and load the rocket into Phaser's virtual library. And you can go under Sprite Snippets. And it should be, yes, the first snippet on the list is insert image into library. And just copy that and paste that in the preload function. We need a key. We'll call it rocket. The path to the image. images slash rocket dot png and then normally we just add that to the stage and I'll show you real quick here by using this snippet but this is going to be temporary because we're going to do it a different way today and let's put it at 100 100 and the library key rocket It's in there and it's huge and it has a lot of transparency in it so if we're going to do an actual game thing later we might need to take out some of that transparency but for the most part we can just reduce that in size by code today now since we're going to be having a lot of missiles we're going to want to put that in a group 
I'm going to say this rocket group equals game add group. And I want to be able to add a missile to the group every time the canvas is clicked. We go back to the button snippets over here. you'll find a snippet called Canvas Click. And I'm going to change that from on up for when the user releases the mouse to on down. So as soon as they click. And I'm going to make a function called Add Rocket. And you can create a sprite directly in the group. I have been up till now making a sprite and then adding it into a group, but there's a shortcut, and I'll just I'll show you the snippet. And that's back under sprite snippets. And it's down towards the bottom. Create a sprite in a group. Group create, you need an X and a Y position and the key. And we've called our group rocket group. I'll just copy and paste that down there, this rocket group create. And we want it to be wherever the user clicks. So game input X will give you that position of wherever the user is clicking. And we want it to be down towards the bottom. Actually, we want it to be off stage probably or right towards the bottom of the stage. So we can say game height. And for now though, just to make sure we can see it because we're not firing the missile yet, let me say game height minus 100. And the key of course is rocket. Have a look at that. Now you see it is adding it, but it is so big, this image, that even if it's adding it at zero, all that transparency in there. So let's shrink that down. When we create a sprite inside of a group, it returns the instance of that. So I can call it var rocket, and then I can manipulate the properties. So I can say scale x equals 0.25, and the scale y as well. So that would make it 25% of what it is now. That's better. One of the things I found, though, is that when you start switching devices, and I'll just turn on the device here, device emulator of the iPhone 6, it may not be proportional to the game size. So what I like to do is say that the scale, we can set the width, rocket width, equals game width times 0.25. So it will be one-fourth the width of the game. Of course, with that transparency in there, that kind of that works. Normally, I would not make something, a, a missile, that, that size of the game. But then we need to make it proportional because if we don't set the Y, we only set the width, we'll get a really fat missile. Or a really skinny missile, depending. So we want to make it proportional, and we can do that whenever you change the width of something. The scale 
x changes as well. So if we match the scale y, I'll bring it up a little bit more so you can see it. So if we change the scale y to match the scale x, we'll get a proportional sprite every time. There. Now let's make the missile fire. And we need to loop through the group. And you're going to want to put this in your update function. And all this does is just loops through the group. And we're going to say this rocket group. And it calls a function every time and that function will be called item so item y minus minus there we go and we can create as many as we want and they'll keep coming. Now, first of all, it's moving a little slow, and we can change that by saying minus 5 every time. Also, if it goes off the screen, we want to destroy that, because if we don't, it'll just keep running. The group will keep getting bigger and bigger, and your game will slow down. So if item Y is less than, I'm going to say 100 right now. Normally, we want that at 0, but I want you to see it disappear. And also, you might want to set it at uh, something greater than zero. If you maybe you'd have a castle wall or an in energy barrier or something else in your game. There. So as soon as they reach the top, they go away, and it won't slow down the game. So I'm going to set that to zero, and I'm also going to put it at game height plus 100, because if we didn't, when we change the size, right back to desktop, it would have problems with the height, because the height is different on each device and on the desktop. Now what if you only wanted to give the user let's say, two rockets at a time. You could do that simply by checking the length of the group. If this rocket group length is greater than one, return. So that way it will only let two rockets out at a time. So I'm clicking as fast as I can, but it won't add another until one of them goes off the stage at top. Also, I notice the X is a little off on that. So one thing we want to do is put the rocket in the center of the sprite. The image is in the center of the sprite, rather. And you do that by rocket anchor set 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Now it should match the mouse. Yeah, that's going exactly where I click it. Uh, and that's the basics of adding missiles into a game. I hope this has been helpful for you, and I'll have more again soon. Thanks for watching.